In this piece of JavaScript code, we declare a variable x, then the function foo increases it and prints the value on the screen. Finally, the function main declares a variable x, which is never used. Every time we call foo, the global variable x is incremented and printed. As we would expect, the return value is 43 and every time we call main, the value is increased. This piece of common lisp code looks rather similar. We use the var to declare the global variable and set f and let to change it. But when we run it, we can see that the result is 144. In JavaScript, all the variables are lexical which means that their definition is valid only inside a specific block of textual code. For example, the first x is declared global and so its value can be used everywhere. The second x is declared inside the main and so its value can only be used at those two lines. The same is true if we introduce a new variable with let or with for function parameters in common lisp. With this code, we would have obtained the desired behavior, because now x is lexical scoped, and so the x we are referring inside foo is exactly the one we declared externally. We can see this is the same behavior as the JavaScript code. On the other end, variable introduced with the var of the parameter are special. The name of the fit symbol refers to the same variable across function calls. When we use let with a variable that was previously defined with the var of the parameter, we change the value of the previously defined variable. In this case, we have a variable x, which is dynamically scoped, so the let does not introduce a new variable. It changes the value of the global x. This can be seen as an alternative way of passing values to a function. This can be useful. For example, if we have a function that takes input from standard input, like in this example, in which bar sets the variable str to a line read from the standard input, and then returns a string, which is the concatenation of what is read with another string. Now we want to test it. We can use the fact that standard input and standard output are dynamically scoped variable. If I run bar, it waits for input, and then it ends. But I can run with the input from string, which rebinds the standard input to hello. Now, when I run bar, read line will read hello, without asking for interactive input. When one starts writing common lisp code, the use of dynamic scope is usually unintentional, which leads to strange bugs. To prevent this kind of situation, the suggestion is to introduce variable with the var and def parameter using the RMAF convention, which is prefixing and postfixing the name with an asterisk, as it happens in the case of standard input. The var and def parameter have a slightly different behavior. When we use the var, the value is assigned only if the variable was previously unbound, while with the parameter we can assign the value at every call. We can see this with an example. I set the variable foo to 42, and then I redefine it to 43. We can see that its value is still 42. Now I set the parameter bar to 42, and then set it again to 43. We can see that in the end, its value is 43. This may seem a small difference, but it's strictly connected to the fact that Lisp provides an interactive environment. Assume that we have a file test.lisp that defines a variable, and then it has some function that uses it. Inside the REPL, we load the file, and we can see that it was loaded. Then I start working with this environment, and for example, I change the value of test. Then I change the definition of print test, and now I want to reload the file, but I don't want to lose the changes that I did to the variable test. In this case, I can reload the file safely, and we can see that the value of test is still 2, because during reloading, when interpreter encountered the var, it basically ignored the definition and kept the old value of test. To reload the definition, one has to make the symbol unbound, 
and then next time I load the file, I can see that test was preloaded. Global variables should be used as little as possible, so at the beginning one should not really deal too much with the var and def parameter, but there are cases in which one has to, and moreover one may encounter them inside others' code, so it's important to know how to deal with them. For today this is all, let me know in the comment if you liked the video, leave a like and subscribe.